Everyone, welcome to the main event. This is Joe Tillman, and today is Friday, April 21st, 2023. And you might have been expecting Spencer Coburn's The Bald Truth with me, Joe Tillman, but the bald truth not happened today. Spencer Coburn was on the road, couldn't make it. So, day five this week, it's the main event. Uh, but welcome, glad everyone could make it. Uh, if you don't know who I am or what I'm doing here behind this microphone, in front of this camera, in front of you fine folks. Uh, my name is Joe Tillman. I'm a hair transplant industry veteran of 20 years. Been working with multiple clinics at a very high level. And what was it? Eight years ago, I think eight or not, eight years ago, ventured out on my own and started uh, working with multiple clinics around the world. I've reviewed, uh, traveled to those clinics using my experience in the industry to be able to say, you know what? I think they're worth considering. And uh, got some great doctors I've been working with, and some of them have been on the main event uh, for the first few episodes. We had Dr. Aaron Nussbaum in Miami, hair transplant accepted member. Uh, we also had Dr. Jerry Cooley, another hair transplant mentor accepted member. And yesterday, uh, we had member Dr. John Cole. That was a fantastic discussion. Uh, really, really enjoyed having him on. And today, we've got a special guest on this special edition. It is... Uh, I, I like to say that he literally wrote the book on hairlines because he did, um, or at least the chapter in the original hair transplant uh, textbook. And uh, that would be Dr. Ron Shapiro. I'll be bringing him on in just a moment. Um, just wanted to kind of just comment on, on a couple of thoughts um, that, that were running through my mind. I've, I've, been, I've been getting a lot more requests for... <laughs> for uh, comments on videos and Instagram, uh, uh, not stories or reels, but just Instagram posts, Instagram accounts, where patients have been, um, I say celebrity patients, have been um, talking about their own hair transplant, showing their results. And it's interesting, I'm getting all these requests. Um, so who knows, I might, I might start doing more of these live streams where I'm uh, having reaction videos or creating a reaction live stream. Um, but yeah, just uh, just a thought I wanted to throw out there. What, what do you guys think? I mean, tell me in the in the chat room, tell me down in the comments when you watch this uh, episode in rerun after the live stream, would you like to see more uh, reaction live streams or pre-recorded reaction videos? And if so, who would you like for me to create a reaction video about? Just let me know. All right. So, yeah, like I said, we've got Dr. Ron Shapiro in the house. Let me turn on his audio. There you are. Ron, how are you? Yeah, it's a delay. I'm fine. Yeah. Is yeah. it a delay on your end, too, or is it? Uh, well, that's, that's uh, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't watch yourself on, on YouTube. Um, and there's a sl slight okay. delay in our connection. But um, that's okay. just, just listen and look at the camera and. Uh, we'll be just fine. So uh, everyone that w yeah. that's watching and listening, you can give us a call and talk to Dr. Ron Shapiro or myself or both of us. That number is toll free. It's 833-563. Wait, 833-563. I keep getting that mix mixed up. 833-563-4247. It is toll free in North America. You can also use Skype or the calling app of your choice to give us a call worldwide. I want to make sure my audio, yeah, audio for the phone is just set up properly. Um, but until we get a call, uh, Dr. Shapiro, how are you? What's new? How's life? What's what's going on at the clinic? I'm doing good. Uh, congratulations on your new show. Thank you. Um, hard to, you know, you know, you don't want to follow Elvis, so you've had some good people. John Cole's a hard act to follow. <laughs> He's one of the best most fun people to listen to talk to. I mean, you can't can't compete with that southern drawl, you know. <laughs> I mean, so and you know, so so hopefully people enjoy what I have to say today. But things uh, are going good. Our clinic's yeah. very busy, yeah. and um, I'm busy. Uh, we just 
a lot of conferences. Just got back from a Thailand conference, you know, mm -hmm. World FUE, and um, there's a conference coming up in Punta Cana for the ISHRS soon mm -hmm. uh, that I'll be at. So, you know, busy that. Uh, it's, things are good. Okay. My um, birthday. Yes, and happy birthday, everyone in the chat room and uh, down below. You can. Uh, I won't wait. say my age, and you're not allowed to. Oh, come on. Okay, fine. No, it's fine. It's, it's, it's our secret. Um, but yeah, everyone wish uh, Dr. Ron Shapiro a happy birthday. It's, um, it's good to have him still on this earth, and uh, we'll, we'll have him around for quite, quite a bit longer, I'm sure. Um, I, I got to ask hopefully you something. I can help. Hopefully, I can contribute you know, with my. I've been doing this for 30 years, so you know, have a little experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you, you've, you've done a few of these. Um, <laughs> well, I, I got I to gotta ask you, first off, as probably the, the, the single physician that is responsible for influencing most of the better hairline design doctors on the planet today because of your, um, your, your I, I guess, groundbreaking hairline chapter, the original textbook. We'll, we'll get to that. I got a, got a call. Yep. Hey, you're on the air with Joe and Dr. Ron Shapiro. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, hello. And bad connection. Uh, I'm in the desert. Uh, how are you? At? I'm hearing it a little bit. You're cutting out there. What? We we missed your name and where are you calling from? Oh, sorry about that. I'm on the road. Let me uh, let me pull over. Name's E, and I am calling from the Mars landscape, driving uh, out the California desert. Okay. Hello, E. I thought you were going to say Utah, but close enough. Not much difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Hey, I, I got a couple questions. I'll give you a little background. I had a surgery, an FUT, mm -hmm. um, about 12 months ago, mm -hmm. and um, I'm uh, intentionally going for my second surgery. Uh, I was about uh, uh, Norwood 5, uh, so we decided to do it two days in a row. I would do one day and then follow up the next surgery about a year later. Um, so this time we're doing the crown. Um, some of my results are a little um, uh, uh, unexpected and not, not very dense in the front, uh, but I'm hoping to get some of that corrected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I had zero hairline before, I think, um, I think the doctor was uh, just trying to sort of get that started. Mm -hmm. Could be wrong. Okay. Um, anyway, I have about three questions. I don't want to be um, too greedy. Is that well, okay? Hang, if I hang ask on, hang on. Before questions? you ask your questions, let, let, let's get some doctor, uh, some clarification for Doctor Shapiro. How? What was okay. your nor, what was your nor, Norwood level, and how many grafts did you get in your first surgery? Hey, I, I believe it was about a five, but uh, pushing it to the next level. Okay. And how many grafts did you get in your surgery? Well, so that's a bit really tell me uh, I know that that sounds odd and everyone asks that question uh, but I was told by the clinic that they don't normally give that number uh, it was ballpark I want to say 3,000 maybe so was this a clinic that just you you pay by the session yeah um, yeah. yeah so so they said based on the uh, the ballpark estimate of the number of graphs that's how they came up with uh, the pricing, so it was, um, I, I thought it was kind of unusual, but you know, I was super comfortable with selecting that position mm -hmm. um, based on my recent. Your recommend, matter of fact, was, um, yeah, yeah. So I went ahead and went when it scheduled surgery again for the second one, which is I, is about the same. Okay, I'm guessing. All right. Um, all right. So. Okay, okay, so uh, Dr. Shapiro, does that help you um, understand what he's dealing yeah, with right now? I would, okay. Yeah, obviously I need to know the number of graphs. And uh, they placed them mostly in the front half? Of That's your right. head? Yeah, so up uh, to okay. the front. That is correct. And, it's, and it's, it's been about a year, right? Yes, yes. And, uh, and, no, and, I didn't and want the, to sound like I was not satisfied. No, no, it's just not quite, probably hasn't quite reached the density you were hoping for. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and, you know, I think my expectations were, um, you know, somewhat reasonable. I don't, I don't think it was, um, you know, uh, unreasonable expectations. Uh, however, I, I don't want to give the impression that I was unhappy. Um, it's no, a, a huge game. 
one last question. Did you have any, when you said you're type five, were you, I, I, the, the, the classification system, system is a little bit wanting in that <laughs> people can be a developing type five, but mm -hmm. not be a type five. I like to know sort of how much hair you might have still, you can be a type five, but still have a significant amount of hair on the top of your head. It's just thinning. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have much hair in the front or were you slick bald the entire front, middle and crown? Yeah, so it was mostly gone. Um, you know, I did have a, like a, a kind of the last remaining uh, part in the front. Uh, I guess you would call that a forelock. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, just a little yeah. bit up there. And um, yeah, it goes all the way back to the crown from there uh, as far as okay. it was bald. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense okay. to me. All right. Okay, yeah. So okay. you had a little bit of a frontal forelock. So, so what are your questions? Okay, uh, so uh, I had a, a conversation with a plastic surgeon, and I happened to mention uh, to him that I was getting uh, my second surgery, FUT, mm -hmm. and so he said something. Um, he he said something interesting. He said, "Why are you getting an FUT when um, the potential for scarring on your second surgery is much higher?" And um, it would use too much donor hair, and uh, it would be better to do the crown with an FUE because you can select triples more. Okay. Okay. So that's one question. So I, I wanted to see what. Yeah, and and I wanted to get your opinion on that if I should switch to an FUE because I was intending on doing an FUT. Well, I I think. I think that um, it, it depends on the remaining laxity in your donor area. Uh, once, you, I mean, once you've done the strip, now there's been an incision, and how's the scar this time? Pretty good. Uh, you know, it was kind of painful for many, many months, and uh, you know, I, I think it's okay now. So I kind of grew it out a little bit. I had a you know buzz for a long time, but I grew it out, and uh, it's. It's not really noticeable. I tried looking for it. I can't find it. I'm assuming that's a good sign. Well, in general, one, in general, one of the approaches is is to do one or two FUTs first. Mm -hmm. Obviously, every time you take another strip, there's a potential for a scar. The first time, that's the least potential. The scalp's virgin. It's nice and loose. I mean, if a person's tight, you wouldn't want to do a FUT the first time to begin with. But when people have very loose scalp, long hair, and they're not super worried about the scar, FUT is a perfectly good way to go uh, the first time. And mm -hmm. lots of times people come back and they're still loose. I mean, very little scar, they're happy. The process, the pain afterwards is a different thing. And so it's always going to be a little more painful. But it's very common to do a second strip. if he sees that you still have laxity and you can do it. And then after that usually is when I would say, usually after the second one, it can start to get tight and that's when I would switch over to FUE because that's when the risk comes. But some people get tight after the first one. So really it depends on your, on your donor. I don't know if the surgeon that you talked to even knew about your laxity or anything. So to make a generalization like that is not correct. I agree with that. Okay, yeah, so that was a phone call with a different doctor. My consultation uh, with my, my hair transplant surgeon, she didn't seem concerned or mention it. And so, yeah. you know, it seemed okay to go with that FTP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, um, so yeah, probably when she, yeah, it's probably when she evaluates you, if she feels it's tight, she may change her mind. But for him to make that assumption right off the bat is, 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 is not is not correct. I mean, especially since you've already had the strip, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I, I, okay. I think I think it yeah. would have been appropriate if he was able to uh, evaluate you in person and actually tested your laxity and he felt like it was too tight for, for a second surgery. Then, yeah, mm -hmm. th that would that would make sense. But then there's also the issue where experienced FUT surgeons, they're not taking the same size strip every time. Uh, the, they'll reduce the width of, of the strip, generally speaking, progressively as you have more surgeries to compensate for that lack of, of, of laxity. So every subsequent strip will be, uh, you know, just that much more or just that. Yeah, uh, usually it thin. decreases by about 500 graphs yeah. each time. Yeah. Yeah. And one last oh. comment on that is that it actually may be better at this point because there is evidence and, and data that shows that the more strips you can do first, like if you do one or maybe two, 
that ends up giving you more donor over your lifetime. Okay. Yeah, and I'm I'm okay. glad I reached out to you guys. I did not know some of that, um, but I do have a second question, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, so you mentioned, Joe, you mentioned something last week about having your hair buzzed before your surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your recommendation on that? Is it better? To, I kind of grew it out a little bit. I have no problem buzzing it, but I'm wondering, is that better? Do you think I would get better results? Does it matter? I'm... I'm more of a purist on that. I I think uh, I think it's great that it's offered. You know, the uh, no shave FUE and um, no shave placement into the recipient area. But I I just think that if you don't have the hair in the way so that you can see the the spaces that you're trying to place hair into, it just makes it mm -hmm. easier for the clinic. And my only question that that I I I, I have when this is brought up is. Why wouldn't anyone want to make it easier for the clinic? I I just don't understand oh, that. Yeah. That, that. That's that's why I look at it and and I understand and I appreciate that it's offered by a lot of clinics uh, where it's not necessary and and a lot of clinics do mm -hmm. it like like even even when I was at Hassan Wong we would do that as well but it would it, there has to be a limit to the number of grafts that's lower. Um, than if it, if the patient would shave because it is more time consuming as well. So I'm a believer in shaving because it's a temporary uh, sacrifice for long-term gain, in my view. Dr. Shapiro? Is it possible to buzz it too short? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, for, for, I, I would, for, okay, let me, let me answer that. First of all, I wouldn't buzz it myself. Uh, the clinic will buzz it. You just have to give them permission to buzz it, and then they can buzz it to the exact length they like. Sorry, that's what I meant. Um, yeah, there's no, that, that, yeah, there's no point. In fact, it's better if you don't buzz it because yeah. if you buzz it and you buzz it too short, they won't be able to see the results of what you have. So it's good for you to come mm -hmm. in with your hair long. Let them see it, and then okay. they will like to buzz it, and every clinic has the ability to shave what they need to shave. So you don't have to shave it yourself, but just give them the permission to do it, and they'll tell you if in their hands they prefer to buzz it. Yeah. But it is, it is just in general, it's easier. Like when I have a person who has when I have to do, and I do it, I do it on shave, and they, they might be on TV or something like that, and they just can't. We're talking about the recipient area, not the donor area. Um, because they usually don't shave the donor area for strip, um, uh, you know they just can't do it. So I'll I'll do it. It just takes me longer. It's a little harder. Can't get quite as many grafts, but it's still a good procedure. It's just a, a notch, potentially a notch less. So that's all. Okay, so so I don't need to like worry about getting a, a one buzz cut or a two or four or whatever. I really would. I just I wouldn't cut it. it. I wouldn't cut it yourself. I really wouldn't cut it yourself. Yeah, I know I'd, I'd wait. Patients come in. Yeah, when patients come in and they've cut it for me, hey, I cut it for you, because uh, I I don't yeah. I I can't tell where they're like you right now. You say it's a little bit not quite as dense as you like it. They're not going to be able to see what you're mm -hmm. seeing. Mm -hmm. It'll look totally different, okay. shaved or buzzed, and they won't know where to put the you know if they're going to put any more in the front or not. Leave it like it is. Don't shave it. Okay, that's a great advice because I was thinking about doing it. All right, gentlemen, I got one last question, yep. and it's kind of. Um, it's kind of out there. You also mentioned on last week's show, um, it, was, it was a casual uh, comment between you and Spencer. You were saying um, you, you were saying something about people dying in the chair, <laughs> and I got a little bit anxious. I know you guys were you, you were saying, "Hey, it does happen. You can get messed up, or, or worse, you can get killed." Well, it's happened. Yeah, and, yeah. So, so, sorry about so that. my my my. The reason I was talking about that is because uh, Vice News put out a video um, about dying to get your hair. Uh, I, I forgot the exact title, but they're trying to trying to have a, a little clever um, title to it to, to get your attention. And it, it was Vice News, yeah. the the India division, and they were they were talking about I don't know how many cases where a patient would go in to have surgery, and a couple of days later they'd wind up dying. And yeah. and if they didn't die, they wound up having like some serious post op recovery issues. Like like one gentleman, he lost an eye, and I I, I said something about I, I can't imagine that being anything short of like you know some sort of super bug that he contracted from from the clinic or from somewhere. It doesn't even necessarily mean it was it was from the clinic. It could have been outside. It could have been MRSA. It could have been 
uh, any yeah. sort of super bug that that he could have gotten anywhere actually. So that that's not really um, applicable. I, uh, applicable. I don't think it should have yeah. been in that documentary. But my point was, what I was saying is, it doesn't matter where you go. Death from hair transplant has happened all over the world. It's happened in the states like four times in the past five to ten years that I'm aware of, and it's just a it's just a a consequence of being in the in a in a surgical situation where you're being given anesthesia, you're given adrenaline, you're given um, you know you're you're being you're being treated, and you don't know how your body's going to react. You know, anaphylactic shock is a real thing. And patients, have, patients will, will, will come into a clinic and they're given, like all the clinics I work with and all, all, all decent clinics have a questionnaire that you're supposed to fill out and it's up to the patient to be truthful and honest about their condition. So if they have a cardiac issue, if they've got cardiac history, they need to let the clinic know. Uh, and usually the clinic will will advise them. Well, you know what? Uh, do you have a do you have a regular cardiac uh, specialist that you you deal with? Yes. Well, did you get cleared for a hair transplant surgery with him? No. <laughs> Goodbye. You know, go yeah. go talk to him uh, because there are precau- precautions that clinics take that can affect that that type of situation. And um, sorry, I got distracted by the call, but it it is possible. And, and and it's not. I, I don't even think it's from the like the, the cases I know about in in the states. They were actually in surgery, where this happened. But there mm-hmm. are also cases like, like the cases in India. As far as I know, all these cases happened except for one. They all happened after surgery, like three days later. So there's a big difference. Oh, but complications can happen. It, they're rare. They're very rare. Um, but it's medicine. You know, I mean, how many times have you read about uh, cases online where some woman goes to a clinic for a tummy tuck and she winds up leaving in a in a bag? You know, it's like mm-hmm. it happens. Yeah. Yep. The Tijuana hotel room. Not a, no, 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 implant. no, I, I don't I don't like talking about third uh, about uh, third countries as if they're the issue. It happens in the States. Look at um, who was the guy in California who who did um, a celebrity's mother? Uh, was it was it Kanye's mother or or some rapper's mother that that died? She went into a, an L.A. doctor's clinic for some sort of plastic. I forgot who it was uh, that went in for a, a plastic surgery uh, procedure. She died. Wow! Really? Yeah, I didn't hear that. That's crazy. It's like maybe eight or nine years ago. I don't, I don't remember who it was. It was someone famous, but. So it's either an allergic reaction or something cardiac. Doc, what do you think? Like, like what have you heard? Well, um, I guess, uh, first let me start. Uh, hair transplants are, if you do statistics over the last 20, 30 years and in general, very safe. Mm-hmm. Hardly even, hardly any complications uh, like of infection. Uh, I mean, there are some mild complications that always occur. Anytime you cut the skin, you can get an infection and folliculitis and maybe some pain in the area of incision. But okay. in general, even with strip, it was it was very, very safe statistically. Mm-hmm. Hardly ever happened. Having said that, people have heart attacks in a store. People have um, yeah. allergic reactions to taking an aspirin and die. You know, people get in, you know, spontaneously things can happen. So things can happen spontaneously. So you have those two extremes, you know. Obviously, you can go in for a hair transplant and something could not even be related to it. Or maybe they didn't realize they were allergic to penicillin and they gave them penicillin. Mm-hmm. Or they didn't realize they were allergic. So those are, the, those are the types of things that could happen. Or a, a mistake, like they were inje- they took, they took an they took anesthesia, like they were supposed to give them lidocaine to numb up the front, and they mm-hmm. accidentally took the adrenaline syringe for stop bleeding they gave them a whole bunch of adrenaline their heart you know their blood so they're usually mistakes that are stupid mistakes that in a good clinic like it sounds like you're going to hardly ever happens i mean mm-hmm. we've hardly had any side effects uh, ever yeah. you know in 30 years so it's it's basically safe something could happen that could be like a an accident or something that's missed having said that unfortunately not in your case, because you're going to an established clinic that seems like a person that knows stuff. That, um, mm-hmm. But around yeah, the world, uh, there Keen. are clinics that... 
like Dr. Keene's great. You know, she's yeah. very. I know she used to work with me, so oh, yeah. I know her very well. She's one of the yeah. stricter than me. And my my staff when she came yeah. in, it was like regimented, you know. And I was a little relaxed. I worked in an ER before, so I, you know, sometimes I may be not quite as quick to wash my hands. She was like double scrubbed and all. That. So she's very good. You know, you don't have to worry about her. Yeah. And well, also, she knows yeah, how to yeah. handle a minor. But there are clinics. You have to be careful. Um, that in the last five, ten years, because of the, uh, you've heard maybe the black market or this or that, but there are clinics that now are, are operated by doctors that aren't, they think of the hair transplant as sort of a extra income thing, like maybe laser hair removal, you know, they're buying a yeah. laser and they just delegate it to assistants and techs who, so they may not be as involved, and then mistakes can happen more, that's all, because the doctor's not as involved. Yeah. They don't have to be doing the procedure, but they have Got to be it. involved in every step, and they have to be. It has to be. A, they have to consider the procedure. But in general, you're probably pretty safe. But yes, things can happen. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to it. I just, um, I, you know, I just kind of was was thinking about it because when I got the shot in the back of my head, um, my heart started beating pretty fast, and, and I, I think I had a little anxiety about that uh reaction from the adrenaline mm -hmm. and they gave me um i i do take blood pressure medicine mm -hmm. so um but it's minor and um they they were recommended that i take an extra one for the surgery okay. and everything turned out great it was a fantastic yeah. clinic and experience so i didn't want to you know make anything sound bad there um you know i would definitely uh recommend her to anybody Nice. No, no, no. You know, what you're saying, one of the most common, it's not a complaint, but the, the, the major goal that patients have and hope for is to get, first to make it look natural, right? You want it to look natural, that's number one. But the second one is to get the degree of coverage and the degree of fullness that they're hoping for eventually, whether it's one, two, or three surgeries. And in one surgery, mm -hmm. it's almost it is difficult to hit that. I mean, people sometimes fall short yeah. just by a little bit. And that's not com that's that's the most common complaint when you do a survey of a thousand patients and say what you know what's the most common not complaint but the, the co because it's it's what people want and it's mm -hmm. very hard you know mm -hmm. you, you should never promise one and done anywhere it just doesn't happen yeah so I mean yeah, it does so happen far gone and <laughs> and the treatment plan was two surgeries to start off with anyway nice. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if I need a third. Um, but I, I know there's a lot of questions. I really appreciate you guys taking my call. Great call. And, and you really helped me out. I'm going to have my surgery in probably two weeks. Awesome. So thank you again, gentlemen. And I hope you guys have a good one. Say, 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 say hi to Sharon. For yeah, tell Doc we said hi. Okay. Will do. Take care, guys. All right. Thanks for calling. All right. Uh, it's toll free. one 563 4247 Again, it's 833-563-4247, toll-free North America. And we got another call right on. Okay. All right. You're on the main event with Joe and Dr. Shapiro. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Jordan from Michigan. Hello, Jordan from Michigan. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Can't complain. Can't complain. What's the question? Um, so I've been taking... Uh, an asteroid and oral minoxidil for a while um continuing to lose ground just wondering if what other options i might want to consider and i'm also curious because i definitely think i'm thinning out my donor area as well so i'm curious to know if because that is thinning out like i just might have a more aggressive version that makes me respond less to the medication dr shapiro okay well um uh, you've been taking the finasteride one milligram a day, you're saying, orally? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. For how long now? For how long? Uh, three years. One, three years, okay. And the oral minoxidil you're taking now? Same, same. Or the top? Yeah. Okay, oral. Uh, oral. 2.5 milligram? 2.5 or, or uh, how much? 2.5. Okay. So um, the thing about medic medicines, of course, is that in general, minoxidil and the DHT inhibitors, um, I mean, the studies show that almost 80% of people do respond in a positive way. I mean, I just did a lecture on this, and, you know, like 80% will either stop hair loss or improve it. I mean, that's it's a fact. But there's still 20%, and if you're unlucky enough to be in that 20% that don't respond as, much, as well, you may, you may have slowed it down, but you may have keep progressing. Uh, and the same with the uh, Rogaine. So 
uh, it's possible. It's possible that um, you're, you you don't respond as well. Um, there are some things you should look for. Have you had your vitamin D checked by any chance? Ever? Uh, no. Okay. So the medicines won't work well if there's something else going on in your life that may be contributing to like the atelogen effluvium, mm -hmm. vitamin D deficiency, thyroid. With women, iron. Mm -hmm. if, if you're taking testosterone, if you've had extreme stress, extreme weight loss, there's other things that contribute to um, hair loss. And and if these things are ongoing, especially the vitamin D and all that stuff, they won't work as well. So the first thing you should do before you gave up on it would be to get a vitamin D checked. If it's less than 60, you need to take a supplement that brings it up to 60. You might have to check it every three months. So that's, I found that on a lot of people. That's simply what it is. So you need to get some blood tests to just double check all that, you know, get a metabolic screen for those things to make sure. The second thing is um, there are some stronger, Propecia is good, but do test rides better? And you might, if you're not having side effects or things like that, you might want to switch to add one to test ride a week or switch over to test ride. Those are two things that both both would increase your degree of therapy. So before I gave up on it, I would do I would do those things, and it may help. Um, you could also add a laser hat, depending on how much hair you have. There are some um, there are other treatments. I'm sure Cole talked about them, some other regenerative treatments like PRP. Yeah, and he did exosomes. But but in general, I would just do those two things first, because that may simply be what it is. Um, you can do injectable dutesteride now, actually. Some people who aren't responding to the oral stay on the oral, and once every four months, they've got some studies out of Europe, and, uh, or maybe two in a row, and then a couple of injections, injectable dutesteride and minoxidil together on top of it boost, boost your effect. So there are some things you could do. The other thing, of course, is, you know, in the workup is sometimes if you, if you, you might, if maybe there's another reason, maybe you do have something else going on and maybe just getting a biopsy, getting it out of the way, just checking, is there something rare, like, you know, that zebra that's going on? I mean, just to make you feel better, you know? I hope that answers your question. Caller? Hello? Yep. Hello. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, Does yeah, that make that sense? Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Is that cool. it? Thank, thanks, guys. Yep. Okay. All right. Have a good day. All right. That was a good call. We got uh, line is open. Toll free one eight three three five six three four two four seven. It's toll free North America, and you can use Skype or any calling app worldwide to also give us a call and ask questions of Dr. Ron Shapiro. Uh, what do you think? I I I I meant to ask him about the um, about his finasteride as well. But let me ask you, Doc. Are you seeing any differences? between generic finasteride and name brand, or are you seeing a correlation with uh, questionable efficacy uh, between... You know, I did. I should have asked him about that. I hope he's still listening. Yeah. Because um, I, I have seen that in the past, and there's obviously some articles about that, about the generic manufacturers like there's five or six main companies from India and Israel and around mm -hmm. the world that start to take over the generic and, and that maybe the product wasn't as pure maybe it didn't work as well so I guess if someone's using generic the first thing another thing you could do is make sure you switch to um, a, a name brand for a while because that can happen I'm not sure how often that happens I don't know if the company's got a warning and they you know, they changed what they were using. I think some people said the one from Israel was known to be good. I can't remember which which company Tiva. that was. That, that's Tiva. Tiva, yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah. so, yes, that is something. That's a good you brought that up, Joe. That's um, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah that, that's Someone's one of the first things I, I I always yeah. think that's, of to, to ask. I, I I forgot in this case, but um, yeah. I, so I, hopefully I, still listening. I, yeah. I find it I find it to be a, a common issue where most of the people that I talk to that are having questionable uh, results or, or, or they don't feel like it's, it's working really at all. They're usually on generic and yeah. And that, it, and that can be, and when they switch, do they get, do they have a, do you I, follow I've, up with them? I've, I've, yeah, I've, I've followed up with, uh, with several people or, or that I asked them to follow up with me and it usually yeah. works, but it's not always. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Sometimes that may be the case. Sometimes maybe the other things I mentioned, but that's yeah. another thing to, you know, there's a checklist of things to, 
you don't give up. You check these things, and there, and it's lots of times it's just one. All you do is hit the one thing that's the problem, and yeah, you're off to a better result. Hundred percent. And uh, wh where are you? Where in the states are you? Are you seeing um, deuterostride based mesotherapy? The the, the topical the, uh, the the injectable. Well, um, there's a company called Chemistry RX that's okay. been around for like three or four years, and um, they they approached me. They started to. They started to supply the liquid dutestride, liquid finasteride, liquid um, uh, for people to do. Okay. So it's available if a doctor wants to do it. I don't know who's been hmm. doing it to be actually. I've been thinking of starting it for years, but you know, it, it's just hard to add something new. I know it's been used in Europe a lot. Yeah. And very effective. I've seen a lot of lectures. We're going to start to do it probably in the next month or so. Okay. Um, you heard I it here first, I don't people. Know who's yeah, yeah, I like to be in the top. But I mean, I think I, I from what I've seen and from what I've heard, it's it's it it, it helps. Yeah. Well, maybe that'll be and the, I next, guess along, uh, the next trend. Along that line, I might as well mention it. You're one of your the people you work for, Victor, mm -hmm. um, has been really instrumental in developing a new topical form of dotesteride yeah. that may be similar to injectable in that it has a special formulation where it does get absorbed mm -hmm. pretty well. Mm -hmm. But they have a, a sort of a special micro silicone matrix that keeps it in the skin, mm -hmm. in the in the scalp, rather than getting absorbed. So it doesn't cause side effects. Like I mean, if, if it's, it's very low side effects anyway. I mean, in my yeah. opinion. But it really, they've done the blood tests and show that the the okay. DHT doesn't drop. It doesn't. It doesn't rise. So it may be a, a you know maybe a, a new form of therapy. Right on. Okay. So we got a caller on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Joe, we haven't spoke for a long time. This is Dante. Dante, on the phone, right on. Dante, how are you? I'm I'm okay, thank you. Right on. How are you? How, how are you? Can't complain. Just uh, enjoy my time here with Dr. Ron Shapiro. Yeah, it's a good show, and um, well, as usual, very informative. Thank you. But I'm gonna. But I, I'm calling about something, you know, like way off topic that I've been dealing with for. A little while now, and I spoke to you and Spencer about it going back maybe two years. So, uh, you know, I'm 66 years old now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had, I guess, six or seven transplants. I kind of lost count. So I'm down to <laughs> the only thing left, I believe, is beard to put on the top of my head. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask the doctor what he thought about that. I've done some research, not detail. I mean, it's difficult because you don't know who to trust. Some <laughs> of the doctors say they do beard. Uh, I don't know if it's, you know, they probably do, you know, it's not like taking hair from the donor area and putting on the top of your head. Uh, the results could be all over the place. So I mean, I'm just calling in that regard. If, uh, you know, there's any input mm -hmm. that yeah. can help me, cause I'd like to do another one. You know, my hairline's pretty good. It's the top of my head going back. So it's not that the beard is going to have to be used in my hairline. And uh, I probably do have a, you know, I, I do probably have a, a couple hundred uh, graphs available in, in, you know, the donor area. You to know, the scalp. Yeah, and to the scalp. Uh -huh. But, you know, if I want to do anything, that's probably going to make a difference. I'd have to use the beard on, you know, the middle of my head back mm -hmm. towards the crown. So that's, you know, that's really my question. If there's Okay. Any, Dr. Shapiro, what any, do you think? Uh, uh -huh. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, that's a very good question, actually, and that's not an uncommon situation. I mean, there are people in the past who have had multiple, multiple surgeries, especially before FUT. Were all your surgeries FUT, by the way? No, uh, uh, yeah, they all. I, I, I've all had. I've had um, six. I, I think it's six or seven strips. I started in nineteen ninety four, and yeah, and my last one was like six years ago. Yeah, I have patients like that. You were lucky that you had uh, good enough laxity and, and uh, density to do that, and hopefully the surgeon did well. And lots of people who've had those six strips, you know, they still look pretty good in their donor. They don't have a big scar. How's your scar? How's your scarring back there? Is it bad or? No, you know, if my hair gets greasy in the in the back, it's um, I mean, you know, you could kind of see it. It doesn't bother me. I, I have a good scar because the doctors that I've gone to. They've always okay. said that they've, you know, so, you know, um, I don't know the exact terminology, but they've used that same incision. So my scar is pretty good. Right. And 
I'd rather have That's hair, it. and I always say, when I talk to Spencer and Joe, I've always said, you know, a lot of the younger guys call in worried about a scar. I said, I want hair on my head. I don't care if I have a scar on the back yeah, okay. of my head, but, my, but I think my scar is pretty good. So the answer to your question then is that, um, I mean, not everybody, you know, not everybody, you sound like a person who's, you know, came at the limit of their strip, but probably has more donor to grab from different places. There's probably some more donor in the donor area. Probably is, you know, who knows? Um, you'd have to look at it, but maybe you can get, a, you'd have to go see someone in person and they can check it. They, they, there's ways to tell, but maybe it's 200, maybe it's 500. The beard in most people Actually, the beards grow as well, if not better, than donor hair in the back nowadays. It's, it's actually easier to do FUV on a beard in the right hands, the people that have experience. You have to go to someone who does a lot of beards. But taking beard hair out, they're, they're thick, they're coarse, they're very, they survive. The problem with them is, like you said, you don't want to put them in the hairline. But for filler in the back, they're very good. And you can get at least 500 a session. Sometimes you can get a thousand total over two sessions. So hey, that could be fifteen hundred grafts between a little bit back there, a little bit in the beard, over one or two sessions. And if what you're looking for, if you're happy with your hairline, and you're just trying to thicken up where there's some hair that's not quite as dense as you'd like. I mean, obviously you're not going to be able to do a big bald area, but maybe you are almost there in the middle or in the crown. It's, there's a, th a threshold phenomenon that I don't, I don't have time to talk about now, but sometimes it just takes a little more hair in that area to put you over a threshold. And then the other thing you could think about, and uh, you may not, I don't know, you know, you're probably already on medications, that, that, that could thicken up. If you're not on that, you might want to revisit that to thicken up existing hair that's finer, because that adds. But also scalp micropigmentation is a very good thing for people like you who have a thinning area, have hair, you're never going to lose that hair, Adding some S&P can make that same amount of hair look thicker. And actually, if you do that, it's okay. Actually, if you do that in the donor, you might even be able to take out a little bit more in the donor that you could have. So there's there are a lot of options for you if you go to the right doctor who does all these different techniques for repair. So the answer is they're good, but you got to find the right doctor. Do you do any beard yourself? We do beard at our clinic, yeah. We do it a lot. Um, it's a very common thing. I mean, we, it's not our, it's not our go. We do that after in people like you who've run out. But we have to evaluate yeah. them first. Yeah, we do beard. We do body hairs too. Are you very hairy on your body by any chance? Yeah, I have a pretty. I, I never, I've never grown a beard, but I have a pretty. I, what I think is a thick beard. I have way too much uh, hair on my body to make me happy. But I don't know. I can't imagine you, chest hair on the top of yeah. my head. It's just like. Ugly curly. No, no, you, know, you can do that. Too. Uh, it's, 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 um, the body hair doesn't grow as good as the beard hair or the top hair, but it's another source for some people. I mean, I don't, probably you can get enough from beard and all the other things to make a dent and do what you want to do, but people even go to body hair. You can get another, a thousand. A thousand body hairs, like 200 regular hairs or maybe 300. <laughs> usually it's finer and they don't grow as well, but. It all adds together. You know, you're just trying a little bit from this, a little bit from that, a little bit of that. So, so really, you just have to come up with a plan by going to someone, see what all is available, medically, cosmetically, and what might be available, and and where you would put it to, you know, if where you want to put it is a reasonable area, you could make a dent. And right, we do that, you? but I we can also I can give Joe knows a lot of people who do. Good work with. This just has to be someone who knows, almost anybody who does good FUE does good beard hair now. It's not that hard. Okay. All Dante, right, Doc, I appreciate it. Yeah. Any any other questions, Dante? That's it, Joe. Well, thank you very much. I'll keep listening. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for calling. All right. Thanks. Have Take care, Dante. You agree with that, Joe? What's that? You agree with that, Joe? Right? You agree with that, Joe? Right? Well, pretty... Which part about anyone who does FUE? For filler, for, 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 fill, for filler, you can you can get beard hair, and it's great for filler in the middle. You know, if, yeah, if you, someone does it right, and that and yeah, beard it, hair, beard hair. Yeah. If someone does it right, I, I do agree with that. I just I, I don't I, I don't see. Let me put this call on, on hold one second. Um, I I don't see a lot of cases of beard hair, even even with. With uh, doctors I work with, I, d I don't see a lot of cases, and um, if they're doing them, they're not communicating it with me. But even when I, you know, was it's first doing usually, reviews, it's the, it's, it, it wasn't yeah. it, it wasn't something that they said they were doing. Like like you know, granted, like with you, when we first started working together, that was seven years ago, and uh, you probably weren't doing a lot of beard hair back then, so that that makes sense. 
but not as much. But it's 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 yeah. over the last. It's, it's become more popular. I mean, it's 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 not it's not the most common thing. It's usually yeah. only for the people that get to. And you can usually you can make most people happy before you get to that. Yeah, well, exactly. The majority exactly. of people. Yeah, yeah. That, so, but, but it is. But, that's but why when I'm you not get to that point, often. yeah, yeah. Because doc- doctors I work with get it right the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we got a call coming in. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so you are on the main event with Joe Tillman and Dr. Ron Shapiro. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is uh, Jim from uh, Arizona. Hello, Jim from Arizona. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. Good. Did I? Uh, did you call just a minute ago? I I did. I don't know what happened to the connection. I was trying I, to get I, through, and I, I put you on hold, and you hung up. So that's okay, though. Not a problem. Uh, okay. Not right. a problem. I thought it was my phone. Yep, no nope, worries. It's all good. Uh, I have a question. So similar to a caller just a few minutes ago, I, I've kind of been one of those non-responders, having uh, responded in the past to finasteride and, and topical uh, minoxidil for a few years and not really been responding and uh, just started taking the brand name of uh, dutasteride and then brand name oral minoxidil or uh, the oral minoxidil. So I'm um, going to give that a little bit of time to work. But I guess my question is, um, related to some of the tests that I've seen people talk about, if you can be a responder to, and I don't know if the tests are for minoxidil or dutasteride or fornasteride, but can you guys um, elaborate a little bit on any of those tests to see if any of these medications are even worthwhile for some folks? Well, the only one I know of is the Trico test by Fargon, Far- Faragon uh, Laboratories in Spain. Um, and I don't know how accurate that is. I don't have a lot of experience with it. I took I took the test myself, where it was sent to my my home, and I I did the swab uh, in my mouth, and then sent it back. And the the test results said that I would react better to dutasteride, and I would not react well to finasteride, which is the exact opposite of my experience. I reacted well to finasteride early on, uh, taking one point two five roughly. Uh, milligrams every other day. That was my my first foray into finasteride. And by nine months, when I had my first follow up, Dr. Wong noticed before he even inspected my hair, he just walked up behind me. He goes, It looks like your crown's improved. Um, and then when I was on dutasteride, I didn't notice any sort of improvement. Um, I did notice I was a bit bloated. There was a bit of water retention going on with that, which is one of the side effects. And um, I I went back to finasteride, and I had no adverse reaction from that either. I didn't go into a, a, a shed of any sort, which, which was odd. And I was using name brand. I only use name brand. It was Avidart and, and Proscar. So that's my personal, personal experience with Trico test. I don't know of any other tests, but maybe Dr. Shapiro does. No, that's the main test that's been publicized and lectured about in the last five years. I know some doctors that use it that really like it. You know, I mean, John Cole was using it, and uh, Epstein was using it. His wife's really big into it, and um, and there's some basic science behind it to make sense. Like, especially with the minoxidil, uh, it tests for an enzyme that's necessary for people to convert the minoxidil into an active form. And if people don't have that enzyme, they may not respond as well. So, for minoxidil, it makes sense. And they test a lot of other things. I think your vitamin D, all sorts of things. So it's a it's a it's a nice test. Um, I don't trust it to rule out something though. Like they, uh, too many, I don't like if it says that you are not like if I wouldn't do it before a patient went on medication, and then they said you won't respond to um, finasteride and not put them on it because me and even Dr. Cole I think have found that even though the test says they might not respond, they might. I, I'd rather do the clinical trial like you've had, um, and everybody's mm-hmm. different. Um, I do think in general people that don't respond to finasteride, it wasn't uh, Joe's experience, but most mm-hmm. people, I mean, most people know that dutasteride is stronger and better than mm-hmm. finasteride is in most people, but everybody's different. And so you almost have to do do like a clinical trial on these things to see. Um, so in your case, um, I think, you know, and, and also do the other things like I mentioned, the vitamin D, the... Uh, the thyroid, all these other tests. Now, now it wouldn't be bad to get the test, but I don't know because it may give you an explanation. Maybe it'll show that you are. It might give you some that you're supposed to respond to all of them. That'll make you feel better. It may say that you 
aren't supposed to respond, but I wouldn't maybe let that make me not give something a try. Because what if you, they were wrong? Because we don't know enough. What if they were wrong and you gave up on something that could have worked? Yeah. I, I just don't trust it enough for that yet, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'd put, uh, put uh, all my stock into that, but I guess I just wanted to see if you it had be any... Interesting. Yeah, yeah. The, the only one is that yeah, no. it would be. I, I thought about doing it for myself. Yeah, they may show that my zinc hair, yeah. my zinc in my hair is low, and I need a zinc. I mean, they talk. They show all sorts of other things like your zinc level and your, you know, biotin levels and your hair, and it might you might find out that you're you know you might be low and you might need some supplements. So that, there's some good stuff that can come out of it. Yeah. Yeah. No good stuff. And then for somebody who's uh, who's been taking finasteride for several years and all of a sudden finds themselves losing ground. And like a one milligram finasteride, do you then say, okay, when you switch over to testosteride, is the 0.25 per day, is that too much? Or would you start on something less than that and see how that goes? Doesn't it come as, to testosteride, doesn't it point come five. Point, point five? Point, because it's point 0.5? 0.5, yeah. yeah. I, and, and I read posts about where people are taking it like once a week or twice a week versus daily. Oh, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Well, what some people do is they'll just continue with the as a, well. Dutasteride, unfortunately, was more expensive than finasteride, and because of that, people came up with these schemes to make uh, add the dutasteride without adding so much expense. So you continue the finasteride, but you add one or two dutasterides a week, mm -hmm. and because the dutasteride is mm -hmm. so long acting, it blocks that second enzyme while the is doing. So you get the effect of almost having a dutasteride. But probably, if it's not working. I if you can afford it, I would just go straight to doing do test right every day. I mean, if if it's a you could go to just one or two do test rides a week, just substitute those for the for nest rides, and then and if it's still not working, move to do test right every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the point okay. five milligram. Yeah, that's the most common um, way of converting over. Yeah, yeah but you should check your have you ever checked your vitamin D. Have you ever checked your vitamin D? Yeah, I have. You know, it's interesting. So last year I, I got checked for vitamin D, zinc, and I forget, what, oh, iron. And uh, they were all low. And so okay. I was uh, given supplements. Now, That's minimal you, supplements, right? So like not not mega dosed. And then I, I tested six months later and everything was high, like out of range on the high level, which <laughs> was kind of odd, right? So I couldn't find that sweet spot. So, and I, ironically, I'm actually getting tested on Monday. I've got my labs from the doctor today. And okay. So, Going to the clinic, uh, so I am going to check that again. It's, I think it's just one of those things I've just got to find that sweet spot. Let me ask you a question about your your finasteride use. So you said that you were taking it for quite a while, and then it seems to stop working. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, I took it uh, like in. I started taking it like 2014, That's what I'm with and uh, it worked for a long time, six, seven, eight years. Okay, and. Uh, and uh, with with just topical Rogaine, I, di I didn't gain any hair. Like I, I didn't fill in much, but I didn't lose anything. Okay. And um, but then just starting to lose ground and lose hairs uh, every day. Did you ever? And, uh, did you ever notice that when you go to Walgreens or CV CVS or wherever you'd go to pick up your your generic prescription, would you ever notice the 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 manufacturer ha had changed? I wish I'd looked for that, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, and it probably did. Yeah. So well, I, yeah. That, that's that the thing. Was the other thing. Like, I, I, I don't, I, I don't slam on, on, uh, on generics at all. I, I think that if you, if you find a good one, then stick with it. Um, yeah. E even if name brand is an option, it's like, why, like it's working. So why, why switch, right? Um, you're saving money. But uh, that's the thing is the, the drug stores don't care who made it. They're just contributed to, you know, that and your low vitamin D and it's just taking a time to sort of kick in and, and reverse or stop again, you know. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, I did ask my pharmacy to switch to uh, brand name Propecia because I, I had a suspicion and Joe, I've listened to you mention that before. And so I gave it. Well, I don't think I gave it enough time. I, I, I took that for about a month before I met, went ahead and just made the switch to brand name Dutasteride, but I'm wondering if uh, maybe brand name Propecia would have you know given what, me a little I, bit I would more do the pro, but, but with your situation, you're, you're, you don't want to lose anymore. Why not just go to the Dutasteride? It's the strongest, best, and just 
see what happens. You can always, if once, if you get to the point where you stopped and you gain back, if you want to try to switch back to the brand name Propecia and see if you hold, that's okay. But, uh, you know, I think you've been losing and having a struggling for a couple of years. I, I, I would go to the two test drive you know, at this point. Okay. 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 And why, yeah. why fiddle, you know, why, why be on the brand name one? And then a year later you've lost more hair and now you go to the new test, right? Because that's the next one. I mean, because of your situation, your clinical story, I, I would yeah. just, I think it's time to go to the, to the new test, right? Just start, just start with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. All right. Um, I do have one more, one more question, if you don't mind. Um, okay. Real, real quick, I, uh, Dr. People, Shapiro, you're, you need to get out of yeah. here in about what, 15 minutes, Dr. Shapiro. I have uh yeah, about, yeah, actually, yeah, I can stay another ten minutes. Okay. I mean, my I have to. You saw the you saw the little one. I have to drop yeah. him off at. Yeah, I, I get it. Okay, um, go with your question, caller. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people were mentioning microneedling and, and how that can help. But if you're taking the orum and oxidil, not applying topically, is there is there going to be still any benefit of trying to do the microneedling yourself, or or is the benefit not going to be as strong if you're not doing the topical minoxidil? Doc, I mean, yeah, you take it. Well, well yeah, well, um, there is our studies that show the benefit of microneedling alone. I mean, theoretically, that's tra traumatizing the uh, tissue, which then triggers the recent growth factors and mm -hmm. things like that, both for skin and for hair. There's a lot of uh, data out there, and of course, if you microneedle you've also created channels for medicine, so that's where the theory is doing it together. But there is evidence that some microneedling can help. I, I, it's, it, I, it's, I think it's lower on the totem pole than everything else you're doing. I don't yeah. think it would hurt. I think I, I, there's so many different, um, I wouldn't be super aggressive, but there are some, uh, some uh, you can see it, I think, on a lot of the uh, forums, some protocols where you, you know, do a, a, a shallow one, Maybe I don't know. Is it shallow weekly and maybe a deeper one every two weeks, a yeah. little bit, something like that. I, uh, but yeah, it, it could help. It won't hurt. It could help. But I, but okay. but like Thank again, you. probably if you did a study, it wouldn't be as helpful as as Propecia. So and the question is, I use this term, responder. Are you a responder to microneedling or not? If if let's say it worked in ninety nine percent of the people, but you were the one percent that didn't, it might not work. Let's say it only worked in ten percent of the people, but but uh, but you're in that ten percent. So the problem is that statistically, a lot of things are worth trying, yeah. and there is evidence that it does work in some people if you're a responder. Got it. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you both. All right. Yep. Thanks, caller. Hey, thanks for holding. You're on the air with uh, Dr. Ron Shapiro and me, Joe Tillman, on the main event. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. You're on the air. 718 area code. Calling from. There you go. Hello? Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up? It's Morty from Brooklyn. Oh, hey, Morty. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. I just uh, got off the phone. I was on a long phone call and I, I wanted to make sure I caught the Dr. Shapiro. Hey, Doc. How's it going, man? Pretty good. How you doing? Good, good. Um, I'm not sure you remember me. You and I met in Greece last year. Was it last year? That would be two years at ago. That, I think. The, yeah, yeah, I do remember. I do, I do. Um, yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I just wanted to make sure that I said hi, and I wanted to let the uh, the listeners know what a brilliant, um, what a what a brilliant teacher you are, um, because I saw your lectures about um, hairline design, um, which I thought were were brilliant, and they really helped to kind of understand what a good natural hairline shape actually looks like. And, and uh, right. it was, it, it was, it was eye-opening. It was really good. So I yeah. just wanted to say that. Did we talk, did we talk at that, at the end, that, that big party on the beach, not on the beach, but at that, you know, they had the, the best gala, I think there yeah, well, last year. We, you know, we, actually, we actually spoke at the, at the Parthenon museum at the little cocktail hour that we had. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They gave us a private tour. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, I appreciate I the compliment. Say hi and, I, I, yeah. Okay. I appreciate the compliment. Thank I you really for the do. tour Thanks. down memory memory lane. That's 
<laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. And and more importantly, to just kind of, uh, I don't, I'm sure everyone has already heard you answer a, a myriad of questions and knows how, how not only how, how, how talented you are, but what a good communicator and teacher you are. Um, because I was very impressed with the, with the lectures. So. Well, I, I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's always, you know, it's always good to hear. And uh, that was a great meeting. I, I love that meeting. That was good. I want to go back. <laughs> I bet, really do. I bet. I mean, the, yeah. the more the more knowledge you spread, the the, the less dangerous these surgeons are going to be. I think. I mean, we can I don't have to tell you. We can hope. Yeah. All yeah, right, I, I don't have to tell yeah. you. All right. Well, All right. I I just wanted to do that and say and say hello to you guys, but uh, I don't want to keep you. I, I really so take it easy. All right. Th thanks for I calling, really, buddy. I really do appreciate. I really do appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Bye bye. All right. All right. We got time for one more call with Dr. Ron Shapiro. The number is toll free one eight three three five six three four two four seven. That's toll free North America, and you can use a calling app like Skype anywhere from uh, the rest of the world. We got Dr. Ron Shapiro, the 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 guy that actually wrote the book on hairline design. Actually, the chapter that was the the textbook. The uh, Unger's hair transplantation textbook. That that's that was the original, right? Well, the original one was like th twenty five years ago, and there's yeah. been four cents, which I wrote the entire book. But that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, with other people. <laughs> but but who's counting, right? Yeah. Who's counting? Yeah. Never yeah. again. The last one came out this year. I think now, Spencer I, has a chapter. Yeah. Yeah. After uh, how long have been waiting on that one? <laughs> yeah, we, that was a four year project. Uh, it's, it's too much. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a project, but it was a labor of love. Well, congratulations on that uh, coming out. I need to get a copy. Yeah, a lot of the doc every, almost every doctor that you've had on the show has had a chapter in that book though. Yeah. In, in the textbook. Yeah. Almost that's right. Cole has a chapter and, uh, in us mom. Yeah. And yeah. So, Right on. Okay. Well, look, uh, there, there's not another call right now, so um, I don't want to keep it down to the wire for you. I know you got a uh, got some things okay. to do before well, you I'll actually come take back. off. I'll come back. I'll come back. This was, you know, give me a couple days notice, and, uh, and it's this this was fun. I right enjoyed on. it. Yeah, so. glad you could join right. us. Thanks for thanks for signing on with us, Doc. Okay. Take All care. Right. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. And. All right, so it's just me. You're stuck with me now, but I'm happy to answer some more questions. It is top of the hour or, yeah, uh, 4, 403 Pacific time. Um, I'm happy to talk to you guys. Uh, I, I knew that Dr. Shapiro wasn't going to be able to hang out for the entire uh, entire two hours. Uh, how's my sound? Yeah, the sound looks like it's coming through. But, yeah, toll free, 1-833-563-4247. Here to answer your questions, I really appreciate Dr. Cole or Dr. Well, Dr. Cole yesterday, but Dr. Shapiro coming on. Um, I was surprised he had the time because he's a busy guy, as you could see, not just with his practice and working on patients, but uh, he's got his kid there. So, uh, yeah, Morty, if you want to call back, that's fine. Uh, let's see, here looks me. Yeah, uh, interesting chat. Hi, Joe. Hi, Dr. Ron. Dr. Ron advised me to have my vitamin D levels checked. I was surprised I was borderline low. Nice. That's from Hair Loss Experiences. That's the um, admin for Hair Loss Experiences, which is a one of the good forums, I'll say. Uh, HairLossExperiences.com. Check them out. All right. And Joe's on with Morty. Hello, hello. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. I sent you an email this morning, which you responded to. Yes, um, yeah, and and then life happened. Man, it's been a crazy day. Um, yeah, I, I, if I, you I, want to show it, you can. I, you I, got a, I got a couple of world class Russian musicians in the other room right now. They're they're in town for some performances. <laughs> so was, oh, how fun! Yeah, what, what, what class, classical musicians? Or? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, hardcore, yeah, like okay. like like the real mm -hmm. stuff, man. The real stuff. But uh, the show has to, the show yeah. has to go on, so I'm here. And um, for for everyone that's, that's just joining, that was expecting the bald truth, Spencer's out of town, and so he, so when I asked him, actually he just sent me a message out of nowhere saying the main event will be on Friday. Get it? And um, so here we are. And it, it was nice to be able to get Dr. Ron Shapiro. It, it was very last minute. Um, actually all my doctors are last minute. I, I, I text them in the morning. Hey, you got time today at, you know, whatever time zone time it is for them. 
And we've had Dr. Nussbaum, Dr. Cooley, then Dr. Cole, and now Dr. Shapiro. Very gracious with their time. Love having these guys on. And I'm going to get all my members on the main event, all the hair transplant mentor accepted member doctors on the main event. And it won't be just once. Uh, you heard Dr. Shapiro saying it was fun. Uh, he'd like to be back on, uh, give him a few days notice. So we'll definitely be, be having him back. And I got a lot of good feedback from everyone that's been on so far. And that's nice. It's encouraging and it's fun. And uh, I'm, I'm learning more about how to man the phone and everything else that's going on. So it's been good. Um, Morty, I, I want to try to bring up your photos. I, I have to download them first. Uh, difficult to right, yeah. difficult to do this while I'm on the air. But um, why don't you while I'm doing that? Why don't you uh, tell people in the in the uh, on on air about your mm-hmm. history, like like how many surgeries you've had with Doctor Cole, yeah. and mm-hmm. a, a little bit about each surgery, like numbers and and things like that. Sure. So um, I, I I do want to go back a little bit further because I want to make sure to to give credit where credit is due. Um, I would not have found Dr. Cole if it wasn't for you and for Spencer. Um, you know, I, my first, uh, you know, when I was younger in my twenties and I, the first time I'd ever seen any type of hair transplant done, was a, a really pluggy, you know, doll hair, like a um, mini micrograft. It was mm-hmm. in this guy who owned a, a diner. This was in the, in the eighties. And I remember seeing him and my dad was bald. So I kind of knew what I was in for. Even when I was like 17, 18 years old, I kind of knew where I was going to end up going. But I said to myself at that point, you know what? If that's the only other choice, then fuck it. I'm just going to go bald. Yeah. And I did. I was, I was, you know, I started losing my hair at about 1920. And I was pretty much a, a full blown Norwood five uh, by the time I was uh, 28, mm-hmm. thereabouts. And I just kept it short. And that was kind of the way I lived my life until about 20, I think it was 2017. When I had run into somebody I was working with, this um, this guy named Muhammad, the Pakistani guy, and he had um, he, he had a very bald crown, but he had uh, what looked like a, a very natural looking frontal hairline. So I figured this was just somebody who just lost hair in the back until he got himself a haircut, and I noticed that he had a, a linear scar on the back of his head. Mm-hmm. So I, so I said to him, I said, Dude, "Did you have a hair transplant?" And, oh yeah, and he, we started discussing it, and and looking at his hairline was very different than, you know, the, than the plug mini micros that I had seen. And he's, oh, you just got to come with me to Pakistan and it'll be $6,000 and it'll be great. And this and that. And, you know, and I was just like, no, um, I, you know, yeah. I'm Jewish and me going to Pakistan is probably not a, not a wise idea. It doesn't mesh but well. The fact yeah. That, yeah. The fact that something like that could be done and it could look as good as it was. And again, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about a fair number of years ago now. Um, I, it is the first time I had had any idea that, you know, you could have a hair transplant that looked, you know, that looked halfway decent, not mm-hmm. only halfway decent, but really decent. And so, um, I, I started hunting around and I actually had found, I found, um, the, uh, the, the ball truth. And that was where I started my education. I remember calling into you guys and asking you a million questions and, yeah. you know, uh, and, 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 you know, and then going through first, it was Dr. Carlos Wesley and then it was, um, then, then I actually ended up seeing Dr. Glenn Charles for a consult. And mm-hmm. then I went to go see, uh, Dr. Um, Jeff Epstein for a consult. And then, you know, and then I, and then and so this was like, I had moved to Florida and then I moved back. And then when I had come back from Florida in January, 2020, I did a consult with Dr. Cole. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of where our, our little, um, uh, our little adventure started with him. And at the time, you know, exosomes were all the rage. This was in 2020. And, um, you know, I was like trying to find, oh, and I did like a couple of phone consults. I did a phone consult with Dr. Cooley. Um, right. So I had, I had done a bunch of consults with lots of different doctors. Um, and, uh, you know, Dr. Cole was like, look, you know, we could try a bunch of different um, uh, rejuvenation medications. And so he had we put together this cocktail, which um, consisted some of it was exosomes, but there was, there was exosomes, there was fat-derived stem cells, there was, um, you know, there, there was Dr. Cole's CRP with the cytokine plasma, mm-hmm. there was, um, uh, I think it's the, the, uh, the stuff from the, um, the placental membrane or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, there was just a whole series of different, different things he just shot up in my head. Um, and, uh, you know, I was already on, since, since Wesley, I was on Wesley's Topical. And the top of it actually given me some, some growth, which was pretty nice. Uh, but it was not what I remember saying. It was not cosmetically significant. In yeah. other words, it was there. It was there, but it really didn't, you know, it didn't make for a, a useful style. 
Um, it didn't so, stop you know, traffic. Did up, no, not even close. Um, it, it was kind of interesting though. Like there were times cause I was, I was still like trying to get on stage and there, there like in certain light, you could sort of kind of see like I sort of kind of had a hairline because I did get a little bit of a forelock, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Um, so it, it, it did, it did something. And, and if nothing else, what it really did was, is it increased the number of usable hairs I had in my head and the number of hairs that didn't have to get transplanted. Well, I'd so say it also encouraged you yeah. to keep pushing because if it was yep. a, a complete abject failure of zero anything, then you might have been disappointed and just kind of thrown in the towel again. Yeah, and you're like, all right, fuck it, I'll just shave my head. And exactly, my but um, I, I I got your photos here. So uh, how many how many graphs over two surgeries? Right. So the so the first surgery was close to four thousand. It was like thirty nine fifty or mm-hmm. something like that, yep. and eighty or something like that. So the, of that, there was basically most of it was head hair, and there was like a maybe a hundred and fifty beard hairs in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second surgery was in December December the twentieth. Doctor Cole reminded me of that yesterday yep. of this year. And that was, uh, that was 1,650 grafts, all okay. head hair. And that was, and that 900 of them went into the, um, into the top part of the crown, the rear part of the mid scalp. So and, around, uh, around was, give or take 5,500 grafts, right? Is that? Yeah. Very right bad. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, got, yeah, I'm about to pop right. this over here. So there mm-hmm. is Morty's before and after two surgeries, 5,500 grafts. The second surgery is only four months. Prior, so it's still got plenty. Yeah, so, so this this is four that. months out from his second surgery. So yeah. there's there's going to be a lot more development with this. This is oh, I know. this is just scratching the surface. I'm excited yeah. for you, Morty. This is this is good. It, this is really good. It, it's dude. I mean, I, I I looked at the when I put this together, uh, and you can see that just both of these photos were in the same room. They're both in my bathroom where, and I was literally wearing the same kind of white t-shirt. Thank you for being clothed. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. How many of these have I seen where the guy's like just wearing his underwear? Why do you people yeah. do that? I don't, what? Like how many, t- why do you, I don't get it. It's just like one of the weirdest things in my career. Sorry for the rant, but it just reminds me. It's like over the past 20 years, I've probably seen FSK might know why. I've seen maybe 500 different patients send in their photos where they're in their bathroom and they're just in their underwear and leaving their toilet yeah. lid open. Oh God. Self-awareness people. <laughs> <laughs> Situational awareness. That's, that's all I got to say anyway. So thank you for wearing yeah. your shirt. All right. So yes. Yeah. Indeed. Um, <laughs> I mean, I have pictures where I don't wear it. I haven't worn my shirt, but I'm not going to send them to you. So. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, no, oh, buddy, man. buddy, I, I got to tell you, man, you're, I'm really happy for you. You are the perfect example of a smart patient because you listen to me. <laughs> because, no, but because you, you realized after, you know, talking to you a few times that, yeah, maybe you should t- take it slow. Be careful. Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah. and you took your time. Absolutely. You're, you're, re- you were ready to get a max harvest. I remember that. Mm-hmm. And yep. um, I was pissed because the person I went to go see was um, I went I went to go see um, uh, Wesley. He's like, we're going to give you twenty seven hundred, and I was like, that's too little, you know. And then mm-hmm. he drew the hairline even higher than the hairline that Cole gave me. Mm-hmm. Um, Which, to be and, fair, is there's um, nothing wrong with that. To be fair, yeah, uh, not at all. Yeah. Um, but it's, my, my point is, is I was very disappointed in, in, in what he was doing and, and what, what, what Wesley was doing was being conservative, which is actually a good thing. But being a novice, I didn't realize that. I was just like, why, yeah. the hell does he just, why didn't he give me the hairline I had when I was 18? So and it, I literally brought yeah. my yearbook pictures with me and showed him, like, this is what I used to look like. Oh, I, you know? I've seen you guys before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. I remember, I remember a guy coming in and he was up, he showed his, he was upset with his result. It's like one of the best results I've seen to date at the time. Mm-hmm. And he, he brought in his, uh, his, his, his teenage driver's license to say, mm-hmm. why, why don't I look like this? And the guy was like almost 50. <laughs> this is like, because you were a child in this photo. That's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And anyway. Little little side yeah. sidebar there, but uh, yeah. yeah, congratulations, Morty. I I, I couldn't Thank you, sir. I, I couldn't say that with more sincerity. I'm really really happy for you, and it's just going to get better. Like I, you're four months, I, I know, almost to the day. I know, I know. 
I know. And, and again, you have, you have the, um, the four months, you, ha- you basically yesterday, you showed a picture of the four months, four months after the first surgery. And so you can see in that picture that it was just, it is very light and it's very, you know, and it's very thin and wispy. Yeah. But, um, this is to what most of what you're seeing here is growth from the first surgery. Yeah. The second surgery growth is just kind of in the background, but it's slowly starting to assert itself. Yeah. Uh, and so I am very excited about what this is going to look like next. I'm going to, I'm going to rock the fucking pompadour, man. Right on, man. You should, yeah. you should. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm very excited about that. Good, great show as always, Joe. Um, thank you. Thank you again. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for calling and Thanks for sending me this photo this morning. Um, I'm happy for you, buddy. So all right, I'm sure easy. we'll get more updates. All right. Take care. Later. All right. Bye. All right, everyone. So I'll stick around for a little bit longer. I'm pretty tired. Had a long day. I was up late last night. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. But uh, if you want to give me a call, number is toll free 833-563-4247. Again, that's toll free 1-833-563-4247. I'll look in the chat room as well, see if there's any questions there. Um, I know there's some comments about Morty. Uh, Sergey says, very impressive results. Morty, uh, Hair Boutique, great results. Hair Boutique, Wow. Uh, Timberwolves XX, great. Re- I I hate reading your names, like people. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> Timberwolves XX. Okay, uh, Rob Helner is saying looking great, Morty. Good good stuff. Um, yeah, we're we're all um we're all happy about about that for you, Rob Helner. Joe, does finasteride affect beard hair to the head in good, in good or bad? What does that mean, in good or bad? Um, I think I know what you mean. So does. Finasteride affect beard hair. Well, yes. You heard, you even heard Dr. Cole yesterday talking about how DHT um, or body hair needs DHT or it's triggered by DHT uh, for growth. So I remember years ago, probably 20 years ago, your doctor was talking about how finasteride should not be taken if you have a body hair transplant. And this was when he was more active on forums. And I believe Dr. Uh, Poswal in India, he, he doesn't like finasteride at all. He, he calls it poison. But I believe that he's talked about how its use can um, or might reduce the efficacy of body hair as a hair transplant resource. I don't, full disclosure, I don't know if this has actually been studied. I don't know if there are observations through actual results. And if there were, I can't see how they would be able to look at it and say, oh yeah, yeah, that's because of finasteride. You can't look at a result and determine if it's because of anything, actually. Uh, Even if it's surgical malpractice, you can't tell unless it's, you know, a big giant scab because of uh, necrosis. But um, I don't know. Like, it seems like it would. Uh, the anecdotal evidence is that people that do take finasteride notice a reduction in body hair growth, like the speed of which or the length. Um, even some doctors I've, I've worked with have said that while on finasteride, they notice that their body hair uh, production growth, whatever you want to call it, is less since they started taking it. So it's anecdotal, but the general idea is that, yeah, it's not a good idea if you're if you're taking um, or if you're using body hair, including beard hair. So it's, it's a, it's a pretty loose answer. And I'm sorry, it's not more specific, but it's not, it's not a, a, a very well studied subject to begin with beard hair. Even with Dr. Uh, Shapiro saying that um, a lot of, a lot of doctors are using it. I don't think, I don't think enough are using it to where they, they, they can say whether one or the other. So I hope that helps. Let's see. Uh, Sergey says having testosterone in your system is enough to maintain beard hair wherever they have been moved. It's true in general, but it, it doesn't mean that reducing DHT wouldn't affect it. Um, like it may be just fine, but I don't see like if if someone is saying that they're noticing reduced growth while on the medication, just in general, then moving that hair. Anywhere in the on the body shouldn't change that. I, I don't see where how how that would correlate, but it's again it's all anecdotal. Um, 
Milk drinker, does it make sense to go for a slightly lower hairline than you want to compensate for it being a little see-through? Uh, does it make sense? It's such a variable, a, a subjective thing. I, for some people, yeah, it would make sense. For other people, no, it wouldn't make sense. Like in my own case, my my hairline could be lower, um, but I don't think that the sacrifice in graphs that I have would. I'm trying to think of how to how to word that. I don't know. Um, it's subjective. Like in my case, I could have it lower, but I wouldn't have it lower if it was too thin. Yeah, I like the density I have now in the hairline, even if, if it's a high hairline. Hope that helps. All right, so Robert Hellner, awesome Joe show. Keep him coming. Thank you very much. I'm going to. Uh, last question, Mohammed Mawafi. I'm Norwood 5, diffuse thinner, have full head of hair, good responder to meds. Can I stop? Can I stop it and have a procedure? Why would you want to stop taking the medication? No, that doesn't make sense. Uh, unless you don't realize that it'll all fall out if you stop taking it, and that's what will happen. So never stop medic unless there's some strange, bizarre side effect that you're suffering from. Never stop taking it. I'm not a doctor, but I'm sure that any doctor would tell you the same. Stay on the medications, and if you want to have surgery, then it needs to make sense. Like you just said, you have a full head of hair from it. So why, why surgery? Stay on the medication. If you can avoid surgery because of medication, you win. Bye. <laughs> you don't. You don't need to be worrying about this stuff. So, all right. Um, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I'd like to thank Dr. Ron Shapiro for his time, graciously shared with all of you, and the main event. And I'd like to thank all of you for watching. And before you go, before you click away, don't click away yet. Click the like button for me. Um, the show's growing and it's because of you guys. And I really appreciate it. Uh, I am going to continue to have more guests. I will be coming back solo as well, just to answer your questions. But as, as with any, any show, uh, if I don't get the questions, I'm going to split. And today I'm getting questions, but I'm going to split anyway, because I'm worn out. I'm tired. Have, I've had a long week. And um, I got stuff to do, but I do appreciate you guys. So please click the like button. If you're not a subscriber, um, please subscribe and ring the bell for all notifications. But it's also the only way that you can comment down in the chat room. Um, if you want to engage with all of these fine people that are in the chat room each and every day on this being the only daily hair loss and hair restoration live stream that you can find anywhere. That's that's how I set it up. You can chat. You can interact with everyone that's in the chat room right now, but only if you're a subscriber. So subscribe. Do me a favor. Help me get those numbers up. I appreciate it. Uh, websites, my website, hairtransplantmentor.com. You can see my entire story. I'm a, tw I'm a 30 year, 29, 29 or 30 year. I keep forgetting. Uh, we'll, we'll call it an even 30 year hair transplant veteran. I've had two bad hair transplants. That's what got me in the industry after nine years of living with that crap and just looking like a circus act. I got it fixed and inspired me to get in the industry to help other people like you. Um, I'll mention hair loss cure 2020.com. I saw him in the chat room earlier a uh, great resource for everything non-surgical. He's got some surgical stuff in there every once in a while, but all the medical stuff, all the uh, the future treatments, this guy has a line on all of it, and he breaks the stories, he breaks the the updates, he give you guys gives you guys all the updated information that you want to know if that's something that you're into. And uh, so appreciate his support. And I saw hairlossexperiences.com also in the chat room, a great resource. It's one of the discussion forums that I I approve of, I think is uh, worth having in your, in your arsenal for your research. Um, why? Well, le legitimate and sensible moderation. Um, I appreciate everything that they do there. And I think it's a good resource. So check that out, hairlossexperiences.com. And of course, uh, baldtruthtalk.com. You got IAHRS. It's a safe place to start. Um, I don't think I forgot anyone. If I did, I'm sorry. Let me know. Send me some choice words. <laughs> I'm out of here, everyone. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>